course. This week we're going to look at hegemony and how it plays out in the media, specifically in relation to reality TV. Last time we looked at Gramsci and Althusser and their theories of hegemony. Hegemony is a theory of how cultural forms are managed and reproduced and how they change. Todd Gitlin looks at television entertainment and movies as the most pervasive and familiar sites of cultural hegemony in the United States. So what are some of the formal devices of cultural hegemony, according to Gitlin? Gitlin argues that the first is format and formula. This refers to the ways in which TV broadcasting is standardized through duration, programming, etc. He argues that weekly or daily shows such as soap operas, static characters, regularity of time slot, all fit within an assembly line society of the 1960s and 70s. How might Gitlin's theory apply to the contemporary global order where we've seen the rise of reality TV as one of the most dominant forms in American television today? And but reality TV emerged in the late 1980s as a response to economic restructuring in American television. The industry went into financial loss and reality TV was seen as a cost-cutting solution. In 1988 was the writer's strike. And rather than paying writers more, producers hired actors, ordinary people, and thus, and thus we saw the emergence of the first wave of reality TV. In 2000, with the threat of another strike, we saw the second wave of reality TV. So what is the format of reality TV? Reality TV contains pre-packaged formats as the basis for program production. Shows like American Idol and America's Next Top Model are what Ted Magda calls, quote, a template providing detailed production and marketing guidelines that can be tailored to each locale. Magda also talks about the emergence of product placement or brand integration as a source of revenue to program producers. Reality TV is closely aligned with the globalization and outsourcing that we have discussed earlier. Globalization in this case refers to the international marketing of pre-established formats and outsour outsourcing is applied in that reality TV finds cheaper non-union labor for production and ordinary people as actors instead of stars because they can be paid less. In the contemporary period, reality TV shows such as Donald Trump's The Apprentice promote the model of the entrepreneur in a world where you have to learn to be ruthless, self-serving, innovative, and profit-seeking. These are the qualities that are promoted. All of the reality TV shows have the same formula where a group is selected, there are challenges, competitions, and one person each week is voted out leaving two people at the end who must and, and the decision must be made between them. A second device of cultural hegemony that Gitlin refers to is that of genre. The genre is a certain kind of framing according to the existence of certain markets. So in classical TV comedies, we can think about sex in the city, uh, representations of the lifestyles of 30-something single career women, that the show appeals to a market of these women. In the show Will and Grace, there is an appeal to a market of gay men and lesbians. And in the 1980s, the Cosby show appealed to a growing black middle class. The third of Gitlin's devices are setting and, cult and character type. Changes in setting and character type are related to genre. In the 1950s, uh, Gitlin says that there were happy people with happy problems. In the 1970s, he said there were unhappy people with happy ways of coping. How might we describe it today? The fourth device is slant, and this refers to the ways in which a TV show registers a certain position or ideological viewpoint. 
In the 1950s, family dramas and sitcoms ignored deep social problems, for example, the Brady Bunch. Television shows of the 1970s domesticated social problems or issues, and that is much the same today. We can look at some more classical television comedies, the case of Roseanne, for instance, a comedy about working class life and the difficulty of making ends meet, the drudgery of everyday life. Yet Roseanne ultimately wins the lottery. The show contains this narrative of social mobility that even working class people can make it up the ladder. In The Cosby Show, we get a portrait of black upper middle class professionals, yet the questions of race and class are hardly ever brought up. And in the show Sex in the City, we see problems faced by single women. There is a critique of marriage as the only option available for women throughout the show and yet, in the last episode, they all end up in relationships. You can see the following clip. Later that day, I got to thinking about relationships. There are those that open you up to something new and exotic. Those that are old and familiar. Those that bring up lots of questions. Those that bring you somewhere unexpected. Those that bring you far from where you started. But the most exciting, challenging, and significant relationship of all is the one you have with yourself. And if you find someone to love the you you love. Hi. Boy shaking, baby. How's Napa? The house is on the market. We got New York. I'm a coming. Well, that's just fabulous. Finally, the last device that Gitlin refers to is that of solution. Cultural hegemony, he argues, operates through finding solutions to problems. However deep the problem, it can be resolved and even wrapped up within the space of a 30-minute sitcom, reality TV show, or blockbuster film. Take the following example. Whitney Thompson is a plus-size model on America's Next Top Model a show and an industry where unhealthy and unrealistic images of women are manufactured. Having a plus size model win the show does not change anything about the industry, but allows a feel good solution that makes the industry look like it is accepting of different kinds of body shapes and sizes while not really changing anything. So who's America's next top model? Oh. Look at these two beautiful ladies that stand before me. You walked in as sweet young girls, one from Honolulu, Hawaii, and the other from Atlantic Beach, Florida. You guys could not be further apart, but you're neck and neck in this competition. And it's been a journey, hasn't it? Who would have ever thought the little baby Anya? You did a good job. Thank you. And little girl Whitney was the one to beat. Uh oh. Could possibly be America's next top model. So who is it? America's next top model is. Whitney. Oh, my God.
and I'm going to cry. But the thing is that I'm proud of myself. I may not be American the top model, but I have my whole career ahead of me. You're the first girl with some booty to win America's Next Top Model. And actually the correct term is full figured model. This should not be called plus size no. or full figure. This should just be called beautiful. There's definitely times I've looked in the mirror or looked at other girls and thought that I wasn't like them. Being in middle school, going through high school, always being judged and thinking, am I different? Like, is there something wrong with me? No, I'm here because I do feel good about myself and I want other women in America to feel better about themselves. I honestly think the girls will look up to me and say, I can see that, you know, I can be that. I don't have to, you know, starve. I don't have to have plastic surgery. I could really be like that. I could be on that billboard. I could be on that magazine cover. Why? Because I'm beautiful, you know, from the inside out. I have breasts and I have hips and I have a butt and I am so proud of those things. I am here, I am me, and I'm not gonna change myself. Mark. It feels amazing to be there because like, oh, this is exactly what I want. This is exactly everything that I've ever wanted. Since I was a little girl. I don't know, Miss J. I think she's got you. All right, you guys, I think it's time for a little impromptu modeling. Yeah. Let's have catalog, darling. Catalog. High fashion editorial. Now give me Seventeen magazine cover. There's one of us that really looks like her. Uh-oh. <laughs> so that's looking like a 34 cover. <laughs>